On Wednesday, uh, January 18th, 2023, we have two topics for our consideration, two draft bills. The first one is Senate File 61, Legislator Per Diem, sponsored by the Management Council. And uh, somebody on this, oh, oh, Matt Obricht and, and Senator Barlow. So I'll turn it over to you, Matt. Uh, Mr. Chairman, first bill is Senate File 61. This was a bill that uh, was sponsored by Management Council, and it came out of uh, Management Council's work with the Legislative Compensation Subcommittee over this interim. And uh, so did Senate File 62 for your consideration as well. Senate File 61 would um, amend the statutory per diem rate for members of the legislature and those boards and commissions that have their per diem rate tied to the legislative rate. It would um, change it to from $109 a day, which it is currently, to $155 per day. And that would be effective July 1st of this year. So for, from July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024, the per diem rate would be $155 a day. And then on July 1st, 2024, the amount would be adjusted by the state auditor to an amount equal to the most recent per diem rates established by the United States General Services Administration for locations within Wyoming. And Mr. Chairman, um, currently there are three different rates set for locations in Wyoming. Uh, the standard rate is, um, $98 per day for lodging and $59 per day for all meals by, set by uh, the federal GSA. There's also a specific rate for Cody of $162 per day currently for lodging and $69 for meals. That rate goes up for Cody effective um, June 1, 2023 to $282 for lodging. Jackson and Pinedale also have their own rate of $207 currently for lodging um, from the GSA, which goes up to $383 per diem for lodging, effective June 1. June 1 or July 1? June 1, and Mr. Chairman, remember that's the Fed, we're tied in on the federal okay. plan there. Um, our change wouldn't go into effect until July 1 of whatever year per Senate file 62. The bill also includes two appropriations. The first to LSO to provide for the increase um, for the remaining biennium for a legislator per diem of $125,000. And the second to um, ANI or to the state auditor's office, excuse me, to compensate the boards and commissions that are tied to the legislative per diem for their increase of $75,000. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that's the bill in a nutshell. I'd turn it over to Senator Barlow, um, who one, was- One quick question, Matt. Sure. As we heard on the floor, you're entitled to either the per diem or actual expenses. The actual expenses is a section that's not called out here. That's right. Okay, thank you. That's Senator Barlow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So most of you actually served on Management Council when this came out of Management Council, and so you're familiar with the discussion. I think probably the the discussion we did not have on the floor today to the to the good chairman's um, suggest, um, mention was, and what Matt pointed out is, what we do affects all of those other boards and commissions out there who receive no actual pay, if you will. They do not receive salary of any sort. They only receive the per diem for expenses. So that is one of the keys. And I, we did have the numbers of the people that were tied, of the number of people that were tied to this. And it was, I think, four or 500. And I, I apologize, I can't remember that number. Um, but that's why that section two language regarding um, those other entities is, is so important if we go forward with this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Questions for the uh, panel? Senator Guru. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Refresh my memory. Uh, Matt or Senator, when was this last raised? 
2005. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, Senator, it was last raised in 2005. Anything further from the panel? Follow up, please. Um, and when was the last time the salary, the 150 salary was raised? You stumped Matt Obrick. <laughs> Which isn't hard to do. January 18, <laughs> 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I think that that was 2008. Same time. Or, or it may have been the same time, too. Same time. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else for the panel? Mr. Chairman. Senator Roethlis. I, I do think just one relevant note, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the GSA updates their, uh, their per diem annually, typically, and that's on October 1, if I'm not mistaken. Is that accurate? Mr. Chairman, from the charts that I pulled out of their rates today, it looks like the new rate um, goes into effect on June 1 for the GSA, at least for the specific areas that have heightened um, per, high lodging, lodging per diem rates. I, I thought that was the seasonal rate goes into effect June 1st, but the, the GSA revises its rate on an October fiscal year, I think. They sure could. Now, I've looked, I looked at Colorado's rates, uh -huh. too, and if they were skier dependent, you know, I mean, that is the seasonal right. rate. So, like, for Aspen, their, their rate balloons in the winter, uh, whereas Jackson's doesn't seem to follow that pattern, oddly enough. Okay, thank you. Matt? Is this an emollient of office that, that should not be claimed by current legislators until a new term of office? Mr. Chairman, a great question. It was LSO and our reading of relevant um, AG opinions that this is not um, an increase in your compensation during your term. It's simply a reimbursement for your expenses. Okay. Anything further for, the, for these folks? All right, thank you. I'll open it up for public comment. Anybody on the Zoom? Nobody on Zoom, nobody here? I'll close comment, it's to the panel. It's been moved and seconded discussion. Please. Thanks, well, I'll just say, you know, I know we're loath to do it. I know I've been here, you know, from the years I've been here, I know how these have come out. I'm gonna say every single now, I can think I can say this with self-assurance, every single person that's directly affected by the legislative powers of, of dictating salary has gotten a raise. Um, 400 plus people are depending on this to find out what they get when they travel. Um, as we all know, the price of good, just take the price of gasoline, I'll throw on my, you know, inflation, you know, hat and say, you know, I mean, I talk to legislators all the time that say the per diem will fill my truck with gas when I go to my next meeting. And so I, I think this needs to go to the floor for the wider discussion. Further discussion? Senator Rothfuss. I'd just emphasize the same point about giving it to the chamber and letting the chamber decide. I think it's really important. We did pass this bill, was it last year or the year before? And it was vetoed based on an amendment that complicated it for folks in Cheyenne. and. This doesn't have that little bit of liability. So I think it's important to let the chamber have at it like they had at the one today. Okay, I have a proposed amendment on page one. Strike until such time as the amount is adjusted as provided by this subsection. Capitalize the T after the insert per diem. The amount to be received by Page two, each mem member of the legislature for expenses shall be, insert determined on, maintain the strikeout, and then strike on line two beginning with 155, strike all of line three, and then strike on line four the word of. So it now reads, the 
per diem amount to be received by each member of the legislature for expenses shall be determined on July 1 of each year by the state auditor to an amount equal to the most recent per diem rates established by the United States General Services Administration for locations within Wyoming. Second. I don't see one I'll do it. amendment. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries. Further discussion? Yeah, yeah. How, how'd you vote? But, let, let me let me tell you, let me tell you, Senator Barlow. I do that at city council meetings. <laughs> yeah, anytime anybody says all in favor, say aye. I'm going to vote. Obviously, he's an exuberant supporter of the amendments. For, further further <laughs> for, further discussion. Okay. Hearing none, call the roll. Senator Group. Aye. Senator Rothfuss. Aye. Senator Hicks. Aye. President Driscoll. He left a proxy. Aye on 61. Or an absentee. Uh, Chairperson uh, Kinski. No. Okay, that passes. The next matter for our consideration is Senate File 62, Legislator Health Care 2. Mr. Obrick. Mr. Chairman, again, another bill from Management Council out of their Legislator Compensation Subcommittee efforts. Um, I'd let Senator Barlow, if he wants to, talk about testimony received on this bill during the interim and at the subcommittee. But the bill, in a nutshell, allows legislators to participate in the employee group health insurance plan for the state of Wyoming at the same level as other state officials do. Um, they receive the same uh, employee uh, contribution for that amount that, um, that employees do and officials, and they can also have their dependents um, be covered under the plan as well. The, uh, the bill includes the definition of a member of the legislature. It also, on page four, um, includes a paragraph about how a legislator shall be considered for purposes of the EGI as a regular halftime, uh, employed on a regular halftime basis for the purpose of employing coverage. It says LSO has to be the enrolling agency for members. Um, Section two on the top of page five talks about eligibility. Mr. Chairman, to your earlier point on Senate File 61, I think this is a new emolument that current members of this legislature couldn't be eligible for. So it specifies that only members starting with the 68th legislature will be eligible for insurance coverage under this act. And they've got um, 31 days after the first day of that legislature to enroll in it. Um, all other provisions, including changing your uh, enrollment plan, you just um, your coverage it? levels are the same as for, for employees. Senator Grew. Matt, um, you said the 68th legislature. For those of us who just got elected this last year, we'd still be in our term. So would that mean for us, it would be the 69th? Well, Mr. Mr. Chairman, again, really good question. I don't think so. All the constitution says is members of a legislature won't set its own compensation or benefits or won't increase its own compensation. Mm -hmm. You won't be a member of the 67th and you'd be a member of the 68th. So if the 67th passes the 68th, even though, hmm, interesting. Thank you. Uh, anything else, Matt, before we go to Senator Barlow? Uh, just, um, you know, we spoke with the head, Ralph Hayes, of uh, EGI on this. He thinks it would be fairly easy to implement. Um, Senator Barlow had one change to the bill, or had multiple changes, but this one I didn't mention was a it'll be a little unique on how premiums are collected for legislators because you may not uh, a certain legislator may not make enough money in say June to cover his premium costs. So we treat that the same way the EGI does for retirees. They uh, essentially get a direct withdrawal from their checking or savings account. Okay. Senator Barlow. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, during the during the interim and during the subcommittee, we had numerous legislators approach us and say basically they were giving up their employment and therefore their benefits while they were serving in the legislature for that two month or one month period. And um, and so to them, this you know may have helped them bridge a gap, or maybe they've just come on this full time so that they wouldn't have to be going on and off their insurance. Now it depends on who your employer is, and it, but they were several of them were state employees or worked within a state agency, and they were actually having a lapse in their coverage for them, they and their families. And the other thing is, um, um, colleagues is. As you know, there's some folks that come into this legislature do not have health insurance, period. I actually do not have health insurance. I'm on a health care savings plan on a, um, you know, it's, it's not health, it's not insurance. It's a you know, different product. Um, and we certainly have folks that don't even have maybe that available to them. So it is, I think it, it um, I think it does actually provide a, a real uh, benefit, if you will, um, and I think to the point of the director in that instance, as not everybody would partake in it, it is an emolument. It is something that you are gaining because of your term in office or your time in office, right. not a reimbursement. Thank All you, right. Mr. Chairman. Anything Thank you. for this? Senator Guerrero. Senator, did you guys all talk about, and I didn't, hear the management council discussion but did you all talk about um the fact that if we do this and we sign up for it and especially now there's three of us who are neither now or recently members of appropriations that then we're put then we're in a position then where we are when ralph comes in to talk to us the egi comes in yeah they come in to talk to us about this now we as members and now plan holders are now talking with the folks who are in charge of the plan about premiums, changing premiums, raising premiums, lowering premiums, raising uh, benefits, lowering benefits about our own plan. And it seems like it, it starts to put us into it. Well, it does. It puts us in a conflict situation from the get go. Did you guys all talk about that? Mr. Chairman, Senator, I, you know, Really good question, and, and I don't remember it coming up this time. Um, but I'd say this, we are in uh, the vast majority of states that do not offer their legislators um, health insurance. And um, in my mind, it would, it would be no different than those other states, obviously, in deciding, or Congress, uh, deciding Social Security benefits or um, federal health insurance benefits, and you would just be a member of an incredibly large class of people um, when you made those decisions. So it wouldn't be a true conflict under the, under the Constitution or under your rules. Further discussion or further questions for this panel? Senator Hicks. Mr. Chairman, if, if, do we know when we parse this out because it includes health insurance, life insurance, all the different components. And I'm interested in what would be just the cost if we were to fund life insurance? Is, is that a number that we could get, Matt, before this, if it gets to the floor? Mr. Chairman, it sure could, because if you'll remember, I think in 2019 or 2020, that was a bill that Management Council considered and it's part of the component to go to the workers comp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't have that number with me today on what that would be. Any follow up? No, I just, Mr. Chairman. Your I'm mic's up. If, if this makes it up to the floor, I think that's something that we might be presented as a potential amendment, at least to start the discussion. But, well, it's already in there. Yeah. It was, so it says right now on page two, line six, plan insurance for life, health, accident, or hospitalization for their employees or elected officials. Oh, so, so, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, it, that, that's true. It's the full gamut of products offered to eat for 
state employees under the EGI. I would say that the um, life insurance right now is de minimis. It is a cap to fifty thousand dollar, and, it, and it's just part of the health insurance package. Right, yeah, it's not separate. Okay. Right. Okay. Further questions for the panel? I added that to my my employees plan when we had somebody pass away. We had to pass a hat to get him buried. It was terrible. Further discussion for the panel? All right, public comment? Anybody on Zoom? No, nobody here? Public comment? I'll close public comment. It's to the panel. Move the bill. Second. Been moved and seconded discussion. Mr. Vice President? Yes, please. So this was one where I think a lot of the discussion focused on not just the legislators that are in the legislature, but the legislators or the potential legislators, I guess you could say, that aren't in the legislature because they couldn't possibly be a part of the legislature where it's eliminating their benefits of health insurance for their family. Um, I think we lose out on a lot of opportunity to have a more diverse group of citizens serving in the legislature because honestly you just can't leave this behind i mean you know you think about it for your family i think about it for mine there is no way i'm going to put myself in a circumstance where i don't have health insurance and if if the legislature did that to me i just i probably wouldn't be in the legislature but you know my wife and i have been fortunate to be able to be in a position continuously with that health insurance we just have a system at this point in time where that is, if you've got a family, that's got to be your top priority is ensure health care coverage under our system. Uh, this could potentially open the door to more engagement. Uh, that was one of the things we talked a lot about in management council, and I, I, that's certainly what compels me to think that this is an appropriate opportunity for us to offer. Further discussion. Um, I've got a little bit of experience with something like this. I thought that putting the city councilman, giving them an opportunity to get onto the city's health plan would get people who would attract, you know, people that would like health insurance. And uh, I was going to make them pay the whole premium. And uh, floated the idea and it did not go over well. And the, part of the problem is there's just all this murmur constantly about federal employees and, and the U.S. Senate and the U.S. Congress and their rich health plan and it just got bollocked up in, in people's perception and it just it, it did not go well and I, I backed off of it and so unfortunately based on that experience I'm not going to be able to support this but that's that's my comment on it. Senator Drew. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Um, I too was in local government and when I was on the county commission the first time we didn't it was an offer to the commissioners when I went on the second time it not only was it offered um, actually it was funny because two of us got elected at the same time we we're a little bit older had some pre-existing conditions I was worried about stepping away from my plan my work plan and getting on a plan then going a few years later then going back and then saying whoa now these were all pre and so I thought I'd lose something so did my colleague and we got told we had to be one. We got told that we'd be the only two county employees that weren't. And it was like, so we got on. And that was where I learned about now there were, you know, five of us and we were administering our own plan. And it was a little bit weird. Um, <laughs> just because it really was, because you're sitting there, it's like, it just, it was a direct conflict and they didn't seem to have a problem with it at all. The rest of them, I was like going, but I didn't like that part. Once again, for the reasons that the good senators said, I think it's worth taking to the floor and talking about it. If it were to pass, that'd be the first thing I'd want to talk about is how do we how do we broach that? Because even from the public perception standpoint, even though we have a we're in a large class, I would think it would be something that we could maybe turn over to some other way to a commission that would take care of that. Oh. And. I think oh, the response is welling up to that. So I was, I'll, if it's okay with you, Mr. Oh, Chairman. Oh, please, Senator Barlow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, and I, I'm not trying to presuppose what the discussion will be, but as you, those of you who are on Managed Council recall, there were actually two proposals for this. One was that the 
um, legislator pay the entire premium. And that was the second proposal. Well, the first one passed, meaning this, the legislature would pick up half of the premium. That one passed, and so I did not bring, or we did not move that second bill, which um, said we pay it. So there would be no additional cost to the state or to the taxpayer. So if there's hesitancy about the um, the cost or the impression of you know largesse that we're getting by serving in this esteemed body um, and the benefits that there are in turn in turn we receive that that may be a way to have the discussion on the floor and see take it to the floor with that and see if there's a way to move this forward in that manner that is where the actual um, ability to for the member to you know be overdrawn if you will or you know pay pay direct that's where it really does become important um, but it is also a value still a value to be part of a large group and the state pool is certainly a large group thank you mr chairman and i apologize for interjecting no, into your into We're your for the inputs good 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 input senator hicks yeah mr chairman i'm i'm going to support this to get it out on the floor because i think it's important we have a discussion out there but had a little experience this in, in my county a few years back and it was just the opposite occurred. We had a long, long time serving county commissioner and, and the last time that, last two times he actually ran for county commission. It wasn't for the salary, he was retired. It was for the health insurance. And that's the only reason the gentleman ran is for the health insurance. So. While it may facilitate some people interested to come on, it also encourages people to stay on longer than they probably should. So it can, <laughs> it, 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 it can probably work both ways, but I do think we should have this debate on the floor. So I will support it. Uh, I, I'm more interested, Mr. Chairman, in the life insurance. Nobody should not be covered serving the state of Wyoming. The other stuff we can debate. Thank you. For the discussion, Senator Grew. Good. Any further discussion? Call the roll. On rule number 62, legislator health care, Senator Guru. Aye. Senator Rothfuss. Aye. Senator Hicks. Aye. President Driscoll. He left uh, absentee aye. Uh, Chairman Kinski. No. That concludes.